Looking at the wall of graduation photos, there is no trace of growth before 1993, when Appleby first saw its coeducational graduating class. The transition into an all-gender school might be not as smooth as you thought. After the seventh principal of the school, Mr. McLean brought the idea of coeducation. There were plenty of resentment, which were mainly coming from alumnus, parents, and even faculties. People were concerned about the student-to-teacher ratio, which didn't really change、mm-hmm. at all. And then a lot of people were concerned about sports. So Appleby was a strong sports school. All the boys were required to participate in sports of some nature, and so many people were concerned that the quality of the sports would diminish because girls were here. And of course, girls had their own sports teams, so it didn't really affect. There was also some people concerned that girls in the classroom would distract the boys,、um, and that their sons would not be able to relax and be themselves. In my humble opinion, they're not looking at the bigger picture, and they're worried about their own place within the system. They had to fight those stigmas, concerns. I think that was one of the reasons why they published that brochure there. This booklet was mailed to every Appleby parent. Its main purpose was to inform the Appleby parents about its decision and why it decided to turn coed. The booklet attempted to persuade the audience that this was the right decision for Appleby's future. In 1991, the first group of girls was officially admitted into Appleby College. This here is a photo of、um, old headmaster Guy McLean. Handing out the ties at the tie ceremony to the first group of girls in September 1991.、Um, there were, I think, approximately a hundred、uh, upper ones, and 20 of them were girls. It was kind of amazing the opportunities that we got because there was so few of us. 551 students in September 1991. 97 were girls. So I don't know what the mathematical ratio is, but very small comparatively that first year. First year, I think there was like four female boarders. They boarded across the street in the Fisher's house. As the second year arrived, more girls enrolled in Appleby College. The situation changed. But in 1992, they officially incorporated female identifying students into an existing all male. Boarding house, which was Walker House. The way they incorporated them was they took the the bottom floor of Walker, the main hallway, and they actually put a wall down the middle of it. So what was an all male dorm prior to that became predominantly male, but with a section that was reserved for female identifying students. As the 90s continued and more and more. Female identifying students came onto campus. The wall moved. So Mr. Grant and Mr. Zakonic have a great story of how their space continued to shrink. One year later, the fourth residence on campus, Bailey House, was built exclusively for female students. Unfortunately, although the girls had settled down on campus, they faced discrimination against them. From some of their male counterparts. Well, there was a lot of sexism. It was one of the biggest things that that, that I saw and, and had to deal with because at at that time I was in Walker House as one of the directors. It, it became a co-ed residence, which was probably the smartest thing we did because that at that point for those two years, people realized how important it was. You know, they realized that girls and boys could actually cohabitate together. But I just think that the girls endured. You know, there was some some meanness、uh, from the boys. There was some, you know, graffiti.、Uh, there was some underlying discussions that involved them. The high school girls had a more difficult time because there, a certain group of boys wanted to make their lives hell. There was one grade in particular who were anti girls coming to Appleby. They caused the girls a lot of grief, and thankfully the school. Stood behind these girls, dealt with the perpetrators, and Mr. McLean, leadership team at the time,、uh, were able to to figure it out and say, "Okay, we can't do this anymore." A number of them were asked to leave. Like the ones I remember 
being hostile towards it were mostly boys who had older brothers who were also sort of hostile towards it and had perhaps sort of learned that. With the mission statement of educating future leaders, running for prefects is often a major part of Applebee experience. First year that we were there, there were only boy prefects, only male prefects, because there were only male seniors, which, you know, it, it was just the structural reality of it. But then after that, um, I think they made a big uh, effort to put women in leadership positions. To accommodate school's transition, significantly more female teachers as well as employees had joined Applebee since 1991. That is a change for the original workplace environment. Um, I tend to gravitate towards positivity, uh, things I have control over and things that I can change. But yeah, there were, there were some staff who were resistant. There were definitely some challenging conversations. It brings out um, a person's voice more because if you're passionate about something, you're going to stand up for what you believe. But yes, it was not easy for the girls. I admire those girls who stuck it out and graduated from Applebee. So the girls in those early years really developed great bonds with each other because they really had to lean on each other. We didn't have anything to prove except to ourselves because we're forming a brand new team. And it's only when we're challenged and forced to move outside our comfort zone that we grow. But never leave the stream of warm and permanent sand. So the days float through my eyes, but still the days seem the same. And these children that you spit on as they are immune to your consultations. They're quite aware of what they're going through. Ch -ch 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 Changes. Changes. Don't tell them to blow up and out of it. 